Good evening and welcome tonight to Trinity Lutheran Church. I'm Fritz Fowler and I have the joy of serving as one of the pastors here at Trinity. Welcome to our Monday Thursday service, the first of the three holiest days of our church year. Tonight we remember the command that Jesus has given us to love one another as we recall uh, the Last Supper that Jesus instituted together. A few notes about tonight's worship service. Pastor Steve Godsell Myers will be serving as our preacher this evening. Pastor Steve leads our Wednesday uh, Bible study that meets every, uh, every week at 11 a.m. here at Trinity. And so, 10 a.m., sorry, 10 a.m. Pastor Steve leads it, not me. So, thank you, Pastor Steve, and thank you for serving as our preacher uh, for this evening. Tonight's worship service is going to end in silence uh, uh, as the altar is stripped and as we prepare for Good Friday's service. So the service tonight doesn't end, but rather continues with part two tomorrow. You're welcome to join us tomorrow evening at 7.30 p.m. Again, here in our sanctuary, we'll also be live streaming that service. We'll gather on Saturday evening for the Great Vigil of Easter at 7.30 p.m. in our columbarium uh, where we will ha hear and, uh, and light the first fire of the resurrection. And then on Easter Sunday, we'll gather three times at 7 a.m., 8.30 a.m., and 10.45 a.m. Our 8.30 service will be live streamed for those of you who are tuning in uh, or would prefer to tune in uh, online to that service. A special welcome you again tonight. We now begin with a moment of silence. I invite you to be to kneel or to remain seated for confession and forgiveness. Friends in Christ, in this Lenten season, we have heard our Lord's call to struggle against sin, death, and the devil, all that keeps us from loving God and each other. This is the struggle to which we are called at baptism. Within the community of the church, God never wearies of forgiving sin and the peace of reconciliation. On this night, let us confess our sin against God and our neighbor and enter the celebration of the great three days, reconciled with God and with one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore de declare to you the entirety of forgiveness of all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I invite you to stand as you're able as we sing together our gathering song.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray together. Holy God, source of all love, on this night of his betrayal, Jesus gave us a new commandment to love one another as he loves us. Write this commandment in our hearts and give us the will to serve others as he was the servant of all, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I invite you to be seated as we hear from God's Word. A reading from 1 Corinthians, the 11th chapter. For I received from the Lord what I also handed unto you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the God's death until he comes. Word of God, word of life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. like to tell you a story from the Gospel of St. John, the 13th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that the, his hour had come before he was to depart this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own in this world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. During supper, Jesus stood up, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. He poured water into a basin and then began to wash the disciples' feet and dry them with the towel around himself. He came to Simon Peter who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? And Jesus said to him, you do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. 
And Peter said, Lord, you will never wash my feet. And Jesus replied, unless I wash you, you will have no share with me. And Peter said, then not, not only my feet, but also my head and my hands. And Jesus said, those who have bathed do not need to wash except for their feet, for they are entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. Jesus knew who was about to betray him. That is why he said, not everyone here is clean. When Jesus finished washing their feet and had put on his robe and had returned to the table, he said to them, do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right to do so, for that is who I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, can wash your feet, you ought to wash one another's feet. See, I have set you an example that you should do what I have done to you. For truly, I tell you, slaves are no greater than their masters, nor messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things and do them, you are blessed. This is the gospel of our Lord. Invited to be seated. Uh, good evening. It's good to be here with you at the start of these three days. Okay, let's face it. John's gospel is different. John starts out cosmologically, describing how the divine word, the Logos, was present at the creation. And before we know it, without manger, without shepherds, without magi, the divine word has become flesh, dwelling among us. Jesus, God's word, is in the world. God's living flesh and blood made available to us. Merry Christmas. John's gospel is different. You know, John has no parables. The other three gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, are called synoptic gospels. That means they can be seen together, and they all follow the same basic trajectory of Jesus' ministry, following him from, from Galilee into northern Palestine, occasionally outside the, the country and the territories, but then he finally makes his first and final trip to Jerusalem where he will be crucified. Well, John turns the tables on the synoptic chronology. Yes, he begins with Jesus in Galilee where he called disciples. And in Cana in Galilee, he performs his first miracle, changing water into wine. Lots of wine, good wine not only rescuing an anxious host for fear of running out, but allowing that host to turn the tables and serving the best wine last. And immediately following that miracle, at the beginning of the ministry still, John describes Jesus going to Jerusalem, into the temple, and turning the tables. Literally turning the tables of the money changers and merchants who have set up to cash in on the temple sacrifice system. The synoptics put that scene at the end of the Gospels, after Jesus has come to town on Palm Sunday. John's Gospel is different. Today's Gospel passage from John depicts the scene of the Last Supper. But John doesn't describe the meal, not at all, which according to the synoptics is the Passover meal. 
No, John reports none of those words spoken over bread and wine, those words be heard from Paul's letter to the Corinthians. John wants to describe something else that happened at the supper. The foot washing of the disciples' feet. John tells us how Jesus turned the tables on the disciples that night as they shared their supper. Jesus might have literally turned a table or pushed a table aside. This is how John describes it. Jesus rose from supper, laid aside his garments, girded himself with a towel, then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with a towel. This was an incredibly unexpected gesture from Jesus. He's interrupted his supper with friends. He's disrobed. He's taken a posture of a servant. He's ready to wash the feet of the disciples with towel and basin. Well, now it's Peter who speaks up. Of course it's Peter who speaks up. Although a little later in the evening, Peter's not going to be so glib when he's standing at the fire outside the high priest's chamber. But now Peter can't help himself. What Jesus is doing is just not right, not at all. You shall never wash my feet, he says. Oh, Peter, never say never. Jesus has turned the tables again by serving the disciples on his hands and knees, washing their hardened, street-weary feet. But washing was a servant's task in Jesus' time, a dirty servant's task. I don't know what the practice has been here at Trinity, but in former congregations, we tried occasionally to work foot washing into the Monday Thursday liturgy. But people didn't want to come forward, you know, take off your socks and shoes and put your feet in the front of the pastor to get washed. So we'd always had to set it up and get a few people in advance. You know, please, you come up, you come up. So we have a couple people, a couple feet to wash. And of course, the people coming up, you know, they wore clean socks, no holes. <laughs> and they'd wash their feet beforehand anyway. <laughs> I had a completely different experience with foot washing at Salford Mennonite Church. In my retirement, Gene and I have connected there at Salford a little bit. They have a community garden that Advent Lutheran and Salford have worked on for years. So we're there at worship, and a couple times a year they have foot washing, and we were there on one day they happened to have the foot washing. Now at Salford, when they have foot washing, they leave the sanctuary and they go out into another room, a hallway or something, and there there are sets of chairs, two chairs facing each other. And the men and women go off, the men on one side, the women on the other side, and they pair up. Now, Jean was with me, and she's always eager to try things. She's ready to go. And I said, I don't think so. I'm not ready for this, I said. So I'm going to stay in my pew sitting. I was going to stay in, my pew, uh, stay in the pew sitting until Wilbur, one of the garden workers, a couple of pews ahead, he stood up and said, couldn't hear what he said, but I think he said, come, Brother Steve. <laughs> We're going to do this. So we went out into the hallway, took off our socks and shoes, and found our chairs. And there, there we were, sitting face to face, across from each other. And Brother Wilbur reached out his hand and pointed to the basin for me to put my foot in. And I put my right foot in, and then he gently washed my foot and my left foot he gently washed that foot and then he I took the feet out and he dried them with a towel and then it was my turn to take a foot and, and just carefully wash it carefully wash the other and then dry them and put them back we made our way back to the place where we had our shoes and socks and <clears throat> I think I just said something like thanks Wilbur but there was just no way for me to express the gratitude of that gesture of brotherly love. It was powerful, powerful. And I think Jesus knows the power. He knew the power of what he was up to that night. It was as powerful as any parable that might have been reported in the synoptics. 
At this supper, he told a parable with his flesh and blood presence. And just in case the disciples missed the point, he said it with words. Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord. And you're right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set an example that you should also do as I have done to you. Throughout Lent, throughout Lent here at Trinity, we've been talking about the languages of love. Jesus, the divine word made flesh, is giving love in the flesh by serving, by gently caring for those dirty, fleshy feet of his disciples. We recall the words that John used to introduce this whole episode. Now, before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. He loved them to the end. Jesus is going to love the disciples to the end. And the end is closing in. Jesus has this last opportunity to serve his disciples as they gather for the supper. His disciples get their feet washed and they get a lesson. A lesson about love and loving. Jesus makes it clear. He wants his disciples to carry forward this language of love, serving others as he showed them. Now, can I add one observation about this foot washing episode? And Vicar Kari made it the same observation a couple weeks ago. At the supper, there are 12 disciples. Twelve disciples are there to share the meal. Twelve disciples are there to have their feet washed. Yes, let's identify the elephant, or shall we say the betrayer in the room. Judas is there, getting a meal, getting his feet washed. And Paul makes it very clear in his letter to the Corinthians, this is the night in which Jesus is betrayed. This means that Judas, soon to be betrayer, is at the table for a meal. He's by the table for the foot washing, receiving Jesus' loving actions given in flesh and blood. Jesus, again, turning the tables on our notions of what love might be or what it looked like. So what does this say to us who would follow Jesus' example, who would follow Jesus' words? If I, your teacher and master, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash... Dot, dot, dot. How do we fill in that blank? How did Jesus' words, how does his example take us into the world to serve? To whom are we sent to serve? Jesus' example speaks to us about our love and loving encouraging us not to set limits on our love and loving. Jesus begins his ministry by turning the tables, upsetting the sacrificial system of the temple. Again and again, Jesus would surprise, baffle, and awe all those around him, religious authorities, people in the crowd, his own disciples, with his table-turning words and actions. This final gathering with his disciples, he turns the tables by providing an incredible act of service. But Jesus is not done. He has not come to the end for which he was sent, that is, his sacrifice on the cross. And by the way, John's gospel, in John's gospel, Jesus is crucified on the Passover. It's the next day, the day the lamb is sacrificed or was sacrificed as the Israelites left Egypt. Yes, there is an end ahead for Jesus. It's always been there. As gospel writer John told us about Jesus at the beginning with the words of baptizer, John, behold, the lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Jesus is the lamb, always the lamb, the lamb to be sacrificed. 
Jesus is committed to go to this end, the cross on Calvary, where he will be crucified as his next act of love. Jesus knew this is how it would end. He often talked about being lifted up. John's Gospel records Jesus' last words on the cross. It is finished. Jesus caught it to the end, that he's reached the end. I'm sure some hearing it thought, well, that's it. Jesus and his ministry are finished. They might have thought, God's promise of love in the flesh has gone the way of all flesh. But as we know, there's still a finishing touch to come. There's still a finale, a different ending that will turn the tables. God will turn the tables on our notions of faith, hope, and love. God will turn the tables on death. But I don't want to jump ahead. It's still Thursday. The third day when Jesus lovingly washed his disciples' feet. An act of love at the table for us to remember and share, to share in and share with. May our loving Jesus be present with us this evening as we turn to the table. May we receive not only his lesson of love, but his gift of love. His gift of love and flesh and blood. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. We continue with our hymn of the day, hymn number 358, found in your Cranberry hymnal in your pew. Page numbers are at the top of the page, 358. I invite you to stand as you are able.
sustained by God's abundant mercy, let us pray for the church, the world, and all of creation. You make a new covenant with your people. Gather your church around word and table in love and promise as these three holy days enfold us. Open us to behold the mystery of our salvation. Merciful God, you give us our daily birth of the earth and work of human hands. Bless those who labor and tend to their crops and those who prepare our meals. Strengthen us to advocate for food justice and a fair distribution of resources. Merciful God, hear our prayer. You, our Savior and Teacher, stoop down to us in servant love. Inspire national and local leaders with a renewed sense of public service. Increase in them a humility to serve with equity and fairness. Teach us to pray for our enemies. Merciful God, hear our prayer. You incline your ear to us in every need. Befriend all who are lonely. Comfort those who grieve. Soothe any who are anxious. Console all who are distressed. Graciously tend to the hurts of your children who suffer in body, mind, and spirit including those we now name aloud or in the silence of our hearts. Merciful God, hear our prayer. You inspire your people to praise in word, song, and art. We give thanks for artists, including especially Albert Dürer, Matthias Grunenwald, and Lucas Cranach, whose gifts enrich the church's worship. Kindle in us appreciation for all who beautify our worship space throughout the changing seasons. Merciful God, hear our prayer. Precious in your sight is the death of your faithful ones. You remember and give thanks for those who have died. With them, we trust your promise to love your own until the end. Merciful God, hear our prayer. We lift our prayers to you, O God, trusting in your steadfast love and your promise to renew your whole creation. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. People of God, the peace of Christ is with you always. And also with you. I invite you to share that peace with those around you. As you finish sharing the peace, you are invited to be seated. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. If you're new to Trinity Lutheran, either here in our sanctuary or joining us online, thank you for being a part of this holy and special service. We hope that you feel God's love as we gather together tonight in worship and to celebrate Holy Communion. Through our connection cards, either online on our website, trinitylandsville.com, or in your pew racks, that you're invited to fill out uh, so we can personally reach out to you and just to say thank you. If you brought an offering tonight, you're invited to bring it forward uh, when you come forward for Holy Communion or at the end of the worship service by placing it in one of the four baskets uh, that are around the altar rail. Uh, tonight, as our choir finishes our musical offertory, we're going to observe a moment of silence, and so please do refrain uh, from clapping this evening. We continue our worship together by hearing our musical offertory. <laughs>
let us pray. God of good gifts, receive these and all our offerings as we present them in faithful service for the sake of your gospel. Prepare our hearts to receive you in this meal as you pour out your very presence through Christ Jesus, the wellspring of eternal life. Amen. In just a moment, we're going to invite everyone to come forward for Holy Communion. There will be two stations here in the front of the altar rails. We will invite those who are sitting in the transepts to come forward first, then those sitting in the pews. You are invited to come forward with your hand stretched out flat. A wafer will be placed in the palm of your hand. You're then invited to pick the wafer up and dip it into one of the chalices that contains red alcoholic wine. You're then invited to kneel or stand around the altar rail in reflection and prayer before returning to your seats. If tonight you prefer gluten-free wafers, grape juice, or sterile packets that contain both bread and grape juice, those can be found on the brown table immediately in front of each of the communion stations this evening. Please do help yourself. If you do have a little cup that you would like us to dispose of, in front of each of the first pillars, there is a plastic bowl. Just place your cup in there, and we will dispose of it at the end of the worship service tonight. People of God, I invite you to stand as you are able as we continue with the great thanksgiving. The Lord is with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. You call your people to cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast that renewed in the gift of baptism, we may come to the fullness of your grace. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and glorify you with their unending hymn. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup and he gave thanks. He poured it and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and drink. This cup is the blood of my covenant, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray.
Come and receive Jesus, our strength in the wilderness. Thanks be to God. The assembly is invited to be seated. Here at Trinity Lutheran, all of God's children are welcome to come forward and receive Holy Communion tonight. So please know that you are welcome to receive the body and blood of Jesus. If you prefer to receive a blessing, just let myself or Pastor Steve know when you come forward. And it would be our honor to offer a blessing over you this evening. We continue by singing the Lamb of God together.
the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you, preserve you, and keep you to life everlasting. Claim your wholeness, live in forgiveness, dwell in God's love now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. Embodied God, at your table, we have tasted the goodness of Jesus. With the eyes of our hearts open to your promise, empower us to hear the needs of our neighbors and touch the world with your love. Amen. Amen. Amen.